Good evening, everyone. Good evening. <clears throat> Let us bow our heads, please. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for your many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you for another day's journey. We ask you to continue to bless our counsel and help us to make the right decisions for our citizens. And we ask you to keep our city safe and keep us healthy. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> First of all, I want to thank all of you for being here this afternoon, this evening. We appreciate you coming all we always do. Uh, <clears throat> our first uh, order of business is that item number one, consideration of May 21st, uh, 2024 City Council minutes. Move for the adoption of the minutes. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Kitt and second by Councilman Kalu. What is the pledge of the council? Aye. Aye. All in favor. Ayes have the motion is carried. Thank you. The recognition of June community of character trait is resourceful. Resourceful is having the ability to find quick and clever ways to overcome difficulties. And we're going to ask all our citizens uh, that are here and that are listening to us, let's practice this uh, uh, character trait are resourceful. <clears throat> we have a appearance from Mr. Brian Williams, the Executive Director of South Carolina Department of Mental Health, a summary of service. So we're going to ask you to come to the podium, Mr. Williams, and state your name and address. And we're certainly glad to have you tonight. Thank you, Mayor Butler. Good evening, City Council. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Brian Williams. Um, I'm an Orange Bay native. Graduate of Orangeburg Wilkinson High School, Claflin University, South Carolina State University. I was named the executive director of the Orangeburg Area Mental Health Center in January of 2017, where I've served at that center for 10 years. I've been a state employee for 17 years. I come to you to present on what we do at Orangeburg Area. Um, currently, right now, we have 70, 77 total staff, three psychiatrists, and two advanced nurse practitioners. We support the recovery of people with mental illnesses. We provide crisis interventions, individual, family, group therapy, along with psychiatric service to children, adolescents, and adults. We provide MMO, medication management only for adults. The programs that we have is IPS, which means individual placement and support. We offer school-based services, clinic-based services, MDFT, multi-dimensional family therapy, which is the highest intensive level for children. ICT, intensive community treatment, which is in the process of, we are in the process of, of developing an ACT team, which is assertive community treatment. That program is simply a hospital without walls, where we are actively involved into the community seeing patients. We have peer support, highway to hope, um, our High Rate of Hope initiative is that we have an RV and we go out into the community to provide services. We most recently been to the Samaritan House on last Tuesday, but I provided you guys with an outline and I believe we go every third Wednesday to the Samaritan House to provide services to the homeless population or anyone else who wants to show up to receive services. We have an entitlement specialist, an engagement specialist, and we have counselors at MUSC Orangeburg, the Detention Center, and Claflin University. I don't have time to go in detail about all the services, but those are the things that we offer at the Orangeburg Area Mental Health Center to the citizens of Orangeburg. Ms. Weem, I, have, uh, I want to ask you something. We have a homeless uh, population here, you know, outside of the Samaritan House. And from our observations and from just talking and talking with people around, they, it, it, it's something mental that they don't like to be confined or they like to be outside. They just can't stand to be confined for some reason or another. Uh -uh. Is there, because I, I, I thought I heard you say something about the crisis. Right? So is there, that, that, that's a 24 hour hotline? Yes sir, mobile crisis is for people who a threat as a threat to themselves or others mm -hmm. um, and what happens is we go out it's 24 hours a day 365 days a year 
um, doing working hours, we go out, but we can only respond with law enforcement. And it's when we go out, they can either be voluntary committed or involuntary committed, mm -hmm. which means if it's involuntary, then we have to get the probate judge involved okay. to put down, you know, what's actually going on, and hopefully she'll sign off on it. Then mm -hmm. law enforcement have up to 72 hours to find that individual. Mm -hmm. um, if not, they unsuccessful with finding an individual, then the process starts over. But most of the time, we are face to face with the individual, so it works out perfectly. Okay. And if they are sleeping outside and say they're not bothering anybody, they're not a threat to nobody, no, you know, they're just out there and they just have mental issues, that is that is that anything we can do about that to you all? Well, I mean, if they're, I mean, they're not, not bothering anybody, yeah. they're just outside sleeping. Yeah, if they don't pose as a threat to themselves mm -hmm. or others, no, sir. But this state offensive is extremely cold, and we know they may got diabetes or any type of illness that could be harm or detrimental to them because of weather factors, then that might be a law enforcement response as far as EPCing that person mm -hmm. to get them well and where they need to be at. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Not a question, but we're just glad that you came to introduce yourself because I think the more of the awareness of mm -hmm. what's going on with mental health helps everyone. So thank you so very much. Thank you. I just want to personally thank you for what you do. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Mine is, uh, my position is coming from the hospital sector. What is your connection with the hospital? We have a, um, a embedded, when I say embedded, that person works for us and they are in the um, critical unit division at the hospital. For an example, you may get a patient, let's say for instance, a patient comes to the, the ER and they go to that CDU unit, yeah. and they may see that that patient may need aftercare for inpatient services, then we have, we find locations for them for hospital beds, and that patient is put up in a hospital bed for no more than 14 days. And then once they're released from that facility, then they'll do a follow-up appointment with us. So you, you stay up to date with the patients in the, in the CDU? Say again? CDU patients, do you stay up, to, especially the pediatric patients? Pediatric the, patients? Yeah, the young kids that are, you know, have a mental problem. Mm -hmm. Do you stay up with them? Yes, sir, our embedded condition is there from 8.30 to 5 o'clock. But that mm -hmm. same process flows, goes on throughout the entire um, day, for the entire day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank and you. she will follow up with them on that next morning and then look for locations for that person to actually go to. After that, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That leaves me. Thank you. Thank you. Right. you Thank y'all. You've been very enlightening. Right. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. And that is my cousin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay. Mm -hmm. okay, our old business. Mm -hmm. this area. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Good evening. Our guests uh, in person and virtually. Um, you have before you second reading of an ordinance amending Chapter 2, Administration of the City Code, by adding Section 2.5-4 to provide for a vendor procurement protest policy. Uh, you may recall we came before you a couple months ago uh, about um, adding this uh, vendor procurement protest policy uh, as a requirement from EPA to obtain grant funding. Uh, we have been working with them to get this, this language and this policy uh, right and, and so that we can qualify for grant funding. Uh, so our city attorney, Michael Kozlarik, I'm gonna uh, ask him to come forward with your permission to kind of explain and walk through this particular ordinance with you. Um, but again, just as a reminder, this is a requirement from the EPA uh, that, that we have this policy put in place so we can uh, obtain grant funding. Certainly. So. Thank you, Mayor, members of council. Um, I, I will do this as succinctly as possible, but there are a number of sort of twists and turns that have led me to be at the podium tonight instead of the administrator. So you, you know when my face shows up that there's something a little bit unusual about what's in front of council. Um, as the administrator indicated, this started as, a, as an EPA requirement. And so when it was originally presented 
and we looked at the material that EPA was requesting, it looked very bluntly like a simple procurement policy, that is a vendor protest policy related to the procurement code, uh, or the, the portion of the city code that deals with procurement, which is in uh, section 2-5, 1, 2, and 3. And what was originally presented to council based on the information we had would have been the addition of a point four, that is another sub item within the procurement portion of the code to add this protest policy. When the protest policy was drafted and presented back to the EPA to review, the EPA came back um, with what I can only recall, what I can only call a, a number of additional requirements. And it suddenly became apparent that what they were looking for was not simply uh, protests with respect to procurement, but that it was a much broader non-discrimination policy for the city to adopt. And when I say non-discrimination policy, I mean the policy, the training, uh, including for vendors, but also for employees, uh, for people who interact with the city for all other activities and programs, those people who have limited English, English proficiency, it is a much, much broader scope of things than just vendor procurement. And so uh, that led us to consider this uh, for one, a possible amendment to the ordinance itself. That is, it would no longer be simply a vendor procurement policy, but it would be something different than that. And I'll describe that in a second. But also, it began to become clear that unlike uh, effectively what was a relatively small amendment to the city code to add a particular, again, relatively small change in the procurement that already exists within city code, this would be a much broader policy. And so looking at that, uh, both of those potential issues, um, it, it became fairly clear to me two things. One, that having these kinds of policies and procedures uh, enacted by ordinance by city council is frankly very cumbersome and very difficult to do because the level of specificity that is in some of what is required by the EPA includes naming the specific non-discrimination coordinator for the city. So imagine that city council were to adopt that as an ordinance and put it in the city code and that person leaves the city. You would require three readings to change that. So even something as silly as having someone leave or take a different position within the city or simply administratively that person is gonna be changed from the HR director, for example, to the city administrator or special projects coordinator. Any of those changes would require an ordinance. Uh, that is a very cumbersome process. So, uh, so for, for example, for that reason, uh, just the administrative aspect of it, it made sense to me to propose to council uh, that we would change what was an ordinance adding a point four to section 2-5, which was related to procurement and only procurement, and instead make an amendment to the city administrator's roles and responsibilities under 2-5.2.B. And I apologize for the, the level of specificity, but I want it to be clear to everyone in the audience and also to the council members, um, again, that this would be, if council moves forward with this, this would be an amendment to the city administrator's responsibilities and all it would do, uh, two things. One, it would take the current item 12 within the administrator's responsibilities and it would move that to item 13. And item 12 is perform such other duties as may be required by the council, not inconsistent with state law or ordinances of the city. That is, no substantive change to that, essentially what we would call other duties as assigned. That would simply move down an item but what it would add uh, is it would take what is currently item 12, move it to 13, and item 12 would become adopt and enforce citywide non-discrimination policies and procedures. I actually think the city code currently permits the administrator to do that. There are a number of places within his administrative code and also within other aspects of the city code that I think read together provide that authority. But I think given that the EPA is looking for something more specific, it certainly makes sense from my perspective to include this specific grant 
uh, of authorization. And then the other thing it does is uh, council could move forward with adopting this ordinance. And that way, as we continue to work with the EPA to finalize those policies and procedures, it administratively becomes that much more simple for the administrator to then sign off on the final versions of those policies and procedures, uh, which obviously, again, would have to be consistent with other city code and with state law, so it, it, and of course with federal law. Um, and so that is the ultimate proposal, is rather than move forward with simply adopting a procurement code, which does not appear to meet all of the EPA requirements, Instead, we're recommending that council move forward with providing the administrator with specific authority to approve those policies and procedures uh, and make that small change within the city administrator's portion of the code rather than the procurement code and continue to work with the EPA to come up with the final policies and procedures. Mm -hmm. And I think that's about as fast as I can do that. <laughs> Are there any discussions on, on this item from anyone? No, not just that enacted by the city council in June. The date will then be put in if we. Yes, ma'am, that is correct. The, the reason those are bracketed, much like um, the ordinance number, for example, is the clerk does not, and we typically provide the, the dates, but the clerk as well. Uh, those items are finalized if and when city council takes ultimate action. Okay. Mm -hmm. we, we don't like to presume that city council is going to give mm -hmm. three readings to any ordinance, so we typically don't put dates in. Uh, for example, this ordinance started in February. Yeah, Had we put in February, February, and March, or February, mm -hmm. March, and March, we would have been changing it anyway, so. Mm. Okay. Because you had something. No, I mean, it makes no more sense because I was struggling with that uh, portion of uh, the reading, but you know, your clarification makes uh, a lot of sense to it. Mm -hmm. no. Okay. Richie, you want to read the ordinance? I'll ask Richie, did he want to say something? Okay, all right. An ordinance uh, number uh, 22024, an ordinance amending chapter two, administration of the city code by amending section 2-5-2B to clarify the city administrator uh, authority to adopt and enforce citywide non-discrimination policies and procedures and providing for other related matters. We need a motion for this. Mr. Mayor, if, if I may, one last item. Um, if the motion from council is to approve this, if it could include amending the original title of the ordinance to reflect the new title that you just read, that would be appreciated. Okay. okay. Thank you. A motion to amend the, the new title to reflect the uh, the new title. I guess mm -hmm. so. So, it's, it's, Doctor, you want to make the motion? Yes, I make a, a motion to, you know, for the passage of the ordinance for vendor procurement mm -hmm. uh, with the new amended portion of it, item number four. Okay. Second. T uh, motion was made by Councilman Kalu, second by Councilman <laughs> Kidd. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have the motion is carried. Thank you. Item number three. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. Item number three is consideration of cancellation of the July 2nd and July 16th, 2024 City Council meetings due to budget meetings. Uh, you all have traditionally uh, canceled uh, the scheduled July meetings. Um, the July 2nd meeting obviously is uh, on the uh, uh, right prior to the July 4th holiday. And then the July 16th meeting would be after a scheduled July 9th budget workshop that we have with you all. So um, to, to avoid having you all meet several times, um, we would offer this for your consideration. Okay. Um we need, we need to entertain a motion for item number three. I move that we uh, could do the cancellation of July 2nd and July 16th, 2024, for city council meeting. Second. Most have been made by Councilman Kidd, second by Councilman Stroman. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Mr. Um, Hannah is on here. Ms. Knotts, what, how you vote? 
Can you hear me, Miss Knotts? Uh, yes, I can. How, how do you me. vote for the cancellation oh, of, of yes. these? I'm in favor. I ask have the motion is carried. Thank you. Okay, item number four. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council, item number four is appointments to Employee Grievance Committee. Um, we have two, two vacancies there. Uh, the first vacancy uh, is in from the Finance Department uh, represent, representative. Uh, there's an uh, unexpired term ending June 4th, 2026. The recommendation from the Finance Department is to appoint Ms. Julie Spell to to um, fill that vacancy. And then we have a vacancy in the Public Works Department. Uh, Mr. Richard Polite uh, term actually ends today, uh, June 4th, 2024. And uh, the Public Works Department is recommending Mr. Michael Gardner as the new appointee. Um, th those are the two individuals that we are recommending for appointment to the employee. Employee Grievance Committee. Okay, now do we need to do this together individually? Whatever you prefer. I mean, if, just if, if you have two separate folks that, if you agree with both folks, it would be more efficient to do it okay. one one vote. Well, let's just see if there are any discussions on uh, Ms. Julie Spells. Is there any discussion on Michael Gardner? Gardner. If not, then we need to entertain a motion for both to adopt both of these parts. I make a motion we accept these two recommendations to the Greens Committee. Motion is made by Councilman Stroman. Second. Second by Councilman Kalu. Uh, all in favor? Aye. How you vote, Aye. Miss? Okay. Eyes have the motion is carried. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there's no matters pertaining to the Department of Public Utility. We have executive session. Uh, item number five, uh, discussion of negotiation incident to propose contractual arrangement and proposed sale, purchase of property, receipt of legal advice, and other matters covered by the attorney client privilege. Project DISC, South Carolina Code, Section 30-4-70-8. Dash two. Uh, at this time, we are deleting item number six uh, due to the fact that our uh, uh, DP, DPU manager is not here, to, here at this time. Uh, item number seven, discussion and negotiation of clients, incident of per proposed contractual arrangement, proposed sale and purchase of property, receipt of legal advice, or other matters covered by the attorney and client privilege, Project Young, South Carolina Code, Section 30-4-78-2. Item number eight, discussion of employment, appointment, compensation, promotion, demotion, discipline, release of, of an employee, Department of Public Safety, South Carolina Code, Section 30, that's four, that's 78 one. Number nine, receipt of legal advice where the legal advice relates to a pending, threatening, or potential claim of other matters covered by the attorney and client privilege settlement, legal claims, position of public agents, agency and other adversary situation involving assertion against the agents of a claim, CRE Holding LLP versus City of Orangeburg, 2024 CP 300383 South Carolina Code 30-4 at 770A2. Uh, I would like to entertain a motion to go in. Motion has been made by Councilman Stroman. Second. Second by Councilman Kalu. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Good night, and we won't be returning to. Mr. Mayor, it, yeah. I apologize again. I, I feel like I've spoken more than I normally do at a meeting. Council may be asked to vote 
on one or more of the executive session items? So we will be. Yeah, possibly. It's a possibility we may be back into uh, be open back. session. Possibility. We don't know yet after we have our discussion. Good night to everyone. Thank you for coming. We want to, I want to acknowledge our Chick-fil-A manager back there, and we appreciate her and what her and her husband do for this city. Thank y'all so much. And our lady here that sell us the ice cream. We appreciate you and your business. Thank y'all so much. Uh, all right. Good night, everyone.
Oh boy. Um, we would like to entertain a motion to go back into open session. So move. So move. Motion has been made by Councilman Hitt, second by Councilman Hanna. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion is carried. We're going to turn this over to our attorney. If you could come to the podium, please. Evening again. Good evening. Uh, Mayor and Council, if uh, Council would entertain a motion to give first reading to an ordinance consenting to the closure of a road in the reference lawsuit that is item nine from executive session. Okay. Uh, before we vote, is there any discussion? If not, we would like to entertain a motion. I move that we consent to the road closure, closing of the public agency. Second the motion. Excuse me. Second the motion. Okay, motion has been made by Councilman Kitt, has been seconded by Councilman Hanna. All in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, we'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. Take a motion to adjourn. Uh, Councilman Stro motion been made by Councilman Stroman, second by Councilman Grievous. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It was aye. aye. Motion is carried. Good night, everyone. <laughs>